G'day guys. <clears throat> I'd probably, I want to make a um, Blu-ray ripping and compressing tutorial because after lots of googling and YouTube searching I've found that there's uh, no good tutorials that just tell you straight how to do it. Um, it's all a bunch of crap and um, telling you to download heaps of other third-party softwares that are really unnecessary um, unless you really want to do full in full on editing like changing subtitle sizes and all that sort of crap. No one really wants that. You just want to keep your high definition video, your DTS HD sound, um, skipping menus, etc etc, all in a small file so you can play it on your TV or easily um, put it on a portable device so you can bring it to a mate's house or something. Uh, so let's get started. Uh, there's a couple of programs you will need. I've got a folder here called Blu-ray Ripping, a couple of different ones. The only one, only ones we're going to be really using is our DVD Fab 8, and I'll have all the links in the description for all of these. Um, I will have torrent links. Uh, give the torrents a go if you like it. Buy it. Uh, that's what that's what I always try to do with torrents. Uh, so DVD Fab 8, make MKV, and of course Handbrake. You may have already heard about that one. Uh, that's the uh, the compressing software, which is really great. Which is also what I'll be using to compress this video to keep uh, the high definition video and audio quality to be able to upload it to YouTube a lot quicker. So the first thing you really want to have, obviously you need a, a Blu-ray read drive to be able to copy. You don't necessarily need a burn unless you want to be burning uh, to another disc. Okay, so you need that. Uh, probably minimum system requirements. Um, a high-end dual-core processor, either Intel or AMD, it wouldn't really matter. At least 2 gigabytes of DDR3 RAM would be recommended and probably a high-end 512 megabyte PCI Express uh, GPU uh, just to get that all smooth playback. Also, if you do want to run that DTS HD video, uh, sorry, not video, audio, you will need a SPIDF uh, pass-through. I've got a Logitech Z5500 sound system in my room, uh, which is a pass-through for that DTS sound. If you do not have uh, that pass-through, you won't want to be um, ripping the sound in DTS, you'll want to be downgrading that to a, a Dolby Pro Logic 2. A Pro Logic uh, just sort of emulates the 5.1 sound. It obviously won't be as good as the DTS, uh, but it really does the job and still gets a very good, uh, very good sound coming out of that. A lot of low end bass, etc, etc. So we'll get started. Alright guys, so I've just opened up MKV. <coughs> Make MKV, sorry. Uh, it's free at the moment while it's in beta, um, otherwise it is a little bit of an expensive piece of software to purchase. I think it's about $60, that's in, um, ex <coughs> excuse me, um, in Australian dollars. Uh, so what it does when you open it, it just did a little quick scan of the disc. Um, downloaded a bit of the information on the AACS, which is version 26. Um, I've noticed that with a couple of the new movies, even the latest version of Make MKV, which is supposed to get rid of the, the copy protection on it, will sometimes not work. I've noticed that with a couple of my uh, movies that I've wanted to back up. Um, I have not tried this one yet. I'm just doing uh, it's Puss in Boots, the new Disney movie. Uh, so I'm just going to try, hit this button here. This starts um, a little scan of the disc, tries to get around that protection that are, that's right there. If it doesn't work, it'll definitely let you know. Um, so let's just see what it does. All right, so as you can see, um, MKV is not able to to copy this disc uh, because of the copy protection. Make MKV obviously needs to create a new version, bring out a new version. Um, I don't know how long that's going to be. Uh, just note that I'm making this video on the this date being the 7th of October, 2012. Uh, so let's go ahead and exit out of this program. I have the latest version of DVD Fab 8 at the moment, which has seemed to work with movies that I haven't been able to copy. So let's go ahead and just open that one up, and we should have no problems here, um, loading into the disk, picking video and audio sources. Uh, 
Alright, so if you already have your Blu-ray disc in the drive, once you open DVD Fab, it will automatically start loading it as the main source. Um, I've just got to pick my country region, uh, B for me, because I'm actually in Australia, so I'm just going to hit OK there. Sometimes it can take a little bit, depending on how long the movie is. Alright, so as you can see, it's loaded up the disc, no worries. And you can see by default that this title here, being 1 minute 30, which is usually about how long Disney movies are, which gives you a rough idea of which one to pick if you're doing a Disney movie, it's picked just the movie file by default. Skipped all those little short menus and all that crap you see at the start of the movie, which no one really gives a shit about. Um, so just keep that one selected. Obviously, if you do want to make a whole disc copy, go ahead and select all that menus. Now, you do have the option to do 2D to 3D. I have not tried that. I don't have a 3D device. Um, but if you want to experiment with this software, it's really great. First thing you want to do, if you're not already in this section, is hit Blu-ray Ripper. You want to go to More and choose MKV in the list here. Mine's already selected, so I don't need to do that. And as you can see, this is the video section. This is the audio section. I'll drag that across. I want to be ripping in the AC3 True HD. Um, that's really strange, it doesn't say DTS. Anyway, that doesn't matter. So you'll be selecting this audio, uh, whichever one is going to be best for you. Uh, this will be a lot bigger file size, so just keep that in mind. Subtitles, I don't really like to keep, so I just untick them. Uh, video effect settings, let's just have a quick look in here. Just gives you a rundown uh, on the video size, um, you know, all the detailed information. You can create a custom, uh, customized size of video if you want to do that. Um, I like to keep the, the full 1080 anyway. You want to keep the profile and MKV remarks. Uh, there's a heaps of different ones to pick from. I found this is the best one to use anyway. Then you want to hit start. It'll um, start ripping the movie. Um, it can take a little bit depending on how quick your computer is. Like I said, those minimum system requirements will add a little bit more time onto it. Uh, for me, this movie would probably take just under an hour to rip. Um, being another movie, such as uh, The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo, it's a little bit longer, can take a little bit longer to do that. So once you've saved your MKV file, you'll probably notice that it's probably around 25 to 40 gigabytes in size, uh, depending on the movie and um, how big the DTS source um, audio file is. So what you need to do after that is open up Handbrake, which is the compression software, which works amazingly. So we'll just load that up. Okay, so that's open now. First thing you want to do is over here, uh, up the top, Source. You want to hit the, uh, the Source button up here and choose the source file. And I'm going to be picking um, a video file at the moment. I've already got some saved onto my external hard drive here. So I'm just going to open up Men in Black 3, one of my favorite movies. So I'm just going to load that. It's going to have a think about it for a bit. Ignore this box. Now the destination. Everyone knows what that is, so you just choose where you want to save the file to. Now, it automatically set itself to uh, normal over in this preset section. You want to change it to high profile, and it'll automatically default to MP4 file. It's you know up to you know up to you what you want to convert it to. I prefer MKV, so I'm just going to choose MKV. Now, a lots of different settings here to pick from. Keep your um, your picture size as default. Now, your anamorphic you want to keep on loose because that's going to keep your file size um, a lot lower um, and you're still going to have a really fantastic picture. Keep that on loose and keep your modulus at 16. Video filters I ignore um, unless you want to do something with that. Video you want to keep this at H.264 because that's your high definition. Keep your quality at constant RF20. Audio. Um, I always remove this second track. I'm not really sure what it is. I'm just going to go ahead and remove it anyway. I always keep this as a DTS HD pass through because I like to have that full DTS sound. That's kind of the main reason I like the Blu rays. Now, if, as I was saying before, if you don't have the pass through or the audio system to, um, to play that file, you want to bring it down to. Where is it? You can choose a. Not that one. You can go to the AAC 
FAAC at the top and choose Dolby Pro Logic 2 or whichever other one you want to choose. I'd recommend Dolby Pro Logic 2 which emulates the 5.1 surround sound. Subtitles. If you had subtitle files you can add them in here. As I said I don't do that because I don't really need subtitles. All this, just keep it as default. They all work great for me. I haven't noticed any difference. The next thing you want to do is once you've got all these settings just hit start. Now for me this takes a very long time because my computer's um, I wouldn't say old but it's dual core, 4 gig of RAM and a 1 gigabyte PCI Express video card. I think the process is holding me back. This process of um, compressing to compress or oh, example a video an MKV file from 25 gigabytes to about 4.5 um, still having the same quality which is absolutely amazing. For me it takes about 10 to 11 hours so you might want to just run this overnight. All you have to do is hit your start button for that. Uh, that's pretty much it guys. Leave questions in the comments box. Um, I always like new subscribers. I, t I try to bring out videos. Uh, sometimes I get a bit slack. Uh, but yeah, thanks for watching.